Hello everybody and welcome back to another anatomy tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at the bones of the ankle joint as well as the bones of the foot. And I'm going to use this talk as a stepping stone into our next talk where we're going to be looking at an ankle MRI and looking at the various different soft tissue structures that surround these bones. But for now, let's start at the ankle, move our way to the foot, and then I'm going to show you some of the orientations and locations of important ligaments and tendons that we'll need to know about when heading into that MRI talk. So we have a look at our ankle series here. There are three main radiographs that we take when looking at the ankle. An AP or frontal radiograph, a medial oblique or mortis view, and a lateral view of the ankle. Now there are actually only three bones that make up the ankle joint. We have our tibia here, our fibula laterally, and our talus of the hind foot. We can start by having a look at the tibia itself. We can see that the tibia is the main weight-bearing bone out of the two between the tibia and the fibula. There's not much weight-bearing happening here through the fibula. The tibia has a medial and inferior process here known as our medial malleolus. We can see that the medial malleolus extends right the way down like that and then out to the tibial plafond here. You can also see a little sclerotic line there which corresponds to that posterior portion of our medial malleolus. The tibia has this fibula notch here in which the fibula sits in and this is our tibiofibular syndesmosis, this distal joint between the tibia and the fibula which we're going to look at in a bit more detail later. Our tibial plafond forms an articular surface with the superior surface of our talus here and our medial malleolus makes this medial articular surface here. Our fibula also has an inferior and lateral projection here known as our lateral malleolus. This is our articular surface of the fibula and we've got a ligamentous surface here, this little scalloped portion of that fibula where the ligaments attach and we're going to look at that on our MRI talk. Then if we have a look at the talus itself, we can see the superior surface of the talus here. It's what's known as the talar dome. We can see this dome shape on our lateral view of the talus. We haven't actually caught this talus in pure lateral view because we can see both the medial and the lateral domes here. We can see both this portion and this portion on our lateral view. The talus has a posterior process here. Sometimes that posterior process is separate from the talus. That's what's known as an ostrigonum. Anteriorly, we've got the neck of the talus here going into the head of the talus, which has this anterior articular surface where the talus articulates with the navicular here. The talus sits on top of the calcaneus, and we're going to look at that when we look at our foot bones. We can see both a lateral process and a medial process of the talus here. Our lateral process makes this V-shaped mark on our lateral x-ray there. The talus articulates with the calcaneus with a posterior facet here, an anterior facet, and you can kind of see this sclerotic margin here, which is an outcropping of our calcaneus known as our sustentaculum tali. And the joint here is not that obvious, but there is a joint as well between the talus and that sustentaculum tali, which extends out underneath the talus. So let's have a look at our foot x-rays now. We've got three main views that we look at in our foot x-rays. A DP view, a dorsal plantar view, similar to our AP or frontal view. We've got an oblique view, and we again have a lateral view. Now some countries will only use this lateral view when they look in an ankle series, but many countries include this lateral view in their foot series. So let's have a look at some of the bones that make up the foot. We've already discussed our talus here, so we can see this anterior process of the talus articulating with the navicular, which is the next bone that we're going to look at. Then we've seen our calcaneus here. We're catching this at a funny view. It's our oblique view here. We can see the anterior process that I was talking about. We can see our posterior tuberosity of the calcaneus there. And the anterior surface of the calcaneus articulates with this bone, which is the cuboid bone a square-shaped bone lateral on the foot. And that cuboid bone articulates with our fourth and our fifth metatarsals here. Medial to the cuboid bone, better seen on this DP view, are three cuneiform bones. Our medial cuneiform, our intermediate cuneiform, and our lateral cuneiform there. You can see that those bones articulate with our first, second, and third metatarsals, and they have an articular surface, one, two, three, with our navicular bone. Now we've seen our metatarsals here. We've got our first metatarsal is the one that heads off to our big toe. Metatarsals can be split into the base, the proximal section is the base, the shaft, 
and then the head, the distal portion. Now it's really important to trace out the cortex on these bases because that's often where subtle fractures are, especially this base of the fifth metatarsal where we've got our perineus brevis attaching here. We can get our avulsion fractures of that base there. You can see two sesamoid bones here. Now you can get multiple sesamoid bones throughout the foot and there. There's a long list of those that you can go and learn if you want, or you can go look them up when you see them on a radiograph. These are the two most common and normal sesamoid bones of the foot. Then our metatarsals are separated from our phalanges by a metatarsal phalangeal joint, our MTP joint. In the first toe, we have an MTP joint heading off to two phalanges. This is our proximal phalange, and this is our distal phalange, separated by an interphalangeal joint. The four remaining toes have three phalanges, a proximal, a middle, and a distal phalange. Our proximal phalange is separated from the metatarsal by our metatarsal phalangeal joint. Then we have a proximal interphalangeal joint and a distal interphalangeal joint. We can separate the foot into a hind foot, a midfoot, and a forefoot, and we separate them along these lines. So our hind foot is made up of our talus and our calcaneus. Our midfoot then is separated from our forefoot by this line or Liz Frank joint. So our midfoot is made up of our navicular, our cuboid, and our three cuneiform bones. And then our forefoot is made up of our phalanges and our metatarsals here. This is what's known as our Liz Frank joint, and this is what's known as our Chopin joint. Let's move on to the lateral view of the foot, and we can see the talus that we've already discussed here, the dome of the talus that articulates with that tibial plafond. We can see here the posterior process, and if this is well corticated and separated like that, that's what's called an ostrigonum. The talus then has a tailor neck here, heading towards the head of the talus, this anterior process of the talus, articulating with the navicular bone here. If we have a look at our calcaneus, I'll get rid of these markings here, we can see that we have a posterior tuberosity here. This is where we weight bear on this section here. We can separate this posterior tuberosity into a smooth portion here, or smooth facet, and then a rough facet here, and then our weight bearing section here. Now it's this rough facet where our Achilles tendon attaches here. The calcaneus then heads anteriorly. This sclerotic part here that we can see is that piece of bone that sticks out medially from the calcaneus and lies underneath our talus known as our sustentaculum tali. We've got an anterior process of the calcaneus here that articulates with our cuboid bone which is quite difficult to see here and then anterior to that navicular bone and medial to that cuboid bone are our three cuneiform bones that are also quite difficult to appreciate here. There we can see our metatarsals, our sesamoid bones, and we can draw an arch that runs along the longitudinal aspect of this foot, known as our longitudinal arch. You have a medial longitudinal arch and a lateral longitudinal arch. You can also see a transverse arch if we were to draw a line across that Liz Frank joint through the medial, intermediate, and lateral cuneiform, as well as the cuboid bone. That will make a transverse arch, which provides some stability laterally to the foot. So I said I'm going to mention a couple of important ligaments, and I'm going to draw them onto the images here, and then we're going to look at some important tendons. And I, I would like you to gain an appreciation for where they lie and how they run, so that when we're going through axial slices on an MRI, we can visualize the pathway of those ligaments. So let's start by having a look at our tibiofibular syndesmosis here. Now there's an interosseous ligament that runs between the tibia and the fibula, and that actually heads all the way up the tibia and fibula shaft here. Then anteriorly, we have a ligament that runs from the anterior surface of our tibia here down and laterally, so inferior laterally towards our fibula here. And that's our anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament. Posteriorly, we have a ligament that mimics that, goes from the posterior surface of the tibia, runs inferior laterally, and attaches to that posterior surface of our fibula. That's our posterior inferior tibiofibular ligament. Now it's these two ligaments as well as our intraosseous ligament that make up that tibiofibular syndesmosis. Now we can get disruption of that ligament without breaking the bones or with breaking the bones and that would increase the space between the tibia and the fibula here. We want to make sure that this joint space is exactly the same especially on our Maltese view and we don't want the distance between the tibia and the fibula here to be more than five millimeters. 
The next ligaments that we can look at are both our lateral and our medial ligaments. Laterally, we have ligaments coming from the fibula towards the talus. We've got a ligament that runs from the talus to the fibula like that anteriorly. That's our anterior talofibula ligament. You guessed it, posteriorly, we have a posterior talofibula ligament. We also have a ligament that comes from the calcaneus here and attaches to the fibula there. That's our calcaneofibula ligament. They're pretty self-explanatory, the naming. Medially, we have what's called our deltoid ligament. Now, the deltoid ligament can be separated into a deep band and a superficial band. The deep band from our medial tuberosity heading towards our talus here, we have a tibiotalar ligament, both an anterior tibiotalar ligament and a posterior tibiotalar ligament. That ligament makes up the deep band of the deltoid ligament. Then we have a superficial band of that deltoid ligament, one heading from our tibia to our navicular, that's our tibionavicular ligament. One heading from our tibia to our calcaneus, actually heading to the sustentaculum tali, that's our tibiocalcaneal ligament. And then we've got bands coming from our tibia to our talus here, which are kind of congruent with that posterior tibiotalar ligament. The certain ligaments within the foot that we need to know about, our Charpeau joint here between our talus and our navicular and our calcaneus and our cuboid has a couple of ligaments. We've got a talar navicular ligament. These are all fairly obviously named. A calcano-cuboidal ligament. And then we've got a ligament that heads from the calcaneus and heads both to the cuboid and the navicular. That's our bifurcate ligament. Then our midfoot is attached to our forefoot by the Liz Frank ligament complex. Now the most important ligament in this Liz Frank joint is a ligament that comes from this medial cuneiform and heads across to the second metatarsal. Now all of these bones are attached by dorsal ligaments, plantar ligaments and interosseous ligaments. If we were to draw the cross section of these two bones here, so we've got our medial cuneiform and we've got our base of our second metatarsal here. We've got a dorsal ligament like that, that's our Liz Frank proper ligament an interosseous ligament there, and a plantar ligament. Now disruption of this ligament can lead to Liz Frank's dislocations here, where we get all four of these metatarsals shifting across and get creating an incongruency between the metatarsal shafts and these tarsal bones. So there are multiple lines that people use to see if these bones are well aligned. Some people use the lateral border of our third metatarsal and our lateral cuneiform here on the oblique view or you can use the medial border of the second metatarsal and our intermediate cuneiform. You want those to be well aligned on our DP view. Now it's really important to assess these regions because the injury or the displacement can be subtle, but the injury itself is quite a serious injury that takes a long time to heal and will often require intervention. Let's have a look at some of the important tendons that cross the ankle joint. And the tendons I want to mention are the lateral and medial tendons that cross the ankle itself. So let's start with the lateral tendons. I said the fibula, the lateral malleolus here, has an articular surface as well as a ligamentous surface. And posterior to that fibula, we have two tendons running through, round the back and through towards the foot. We've got a perineus brevis and a perineus longus. The longest is lateral. The perineus brevis runs behind the fibula and heads down to the base of the fifth metatarsal. So it will run behind the fibula here, underneath the tarsals, and then attach to the base of the fifth metatarsal here. The perineus longus heads posterior to that lateral malleolus before diving inwards and heading towards our medial cuneiform here. So we can see how that runs underneath the tarsal bones, underneath all of these, attaching to that medial cuneiform. If we were to flex these muscles, we would evert our foot. We would lift this lateral side of the foot and rotate it like that, everting the foot. Medially, we have three tendons passing behind our medial malleolus. And we're going to look at these very closely on our MRI. There's a common mnemonic that everyone uses, Tom, Dick, and Harry to remember these three tendons that pass behind this medial malleolus. It's our tibialis posterior, our flexor digitorum longus, and our flexor hallucis longus. This flexor hallucis longus, we're going to follow it around. It runs underneath the sustentaculum tali here of our cuneiform before heading out towards the greater toe. 
There are other tendons and ligaments that we're going to look at on our MRI talk, but these are the major ones that I want you to understand their pathway prior to going to that MRI talk. So we've covered the bones of the ankle joint as well as the bones of the foot, and we see how they relate to one another. It's always good to make sure that you know what is medial and what is lateral. Start with your tibia medially, your fibula laterally. Make sure you remember your cuneiforms, your medial, intermediate, and lateral cuneiforms are medial structures. Your cuboid is a lateral structure. That talus heading to the navicular on the medial surface, our calcaneus heading towards our cuboid on that lateral surface. Try and get an appreciation for how these bones fit together. It is a complex 3D structure, and I would encourage you to go through multiple scans, naming the bones and trying to imagine the ligaments and tendons that head through this ankle joint. Next week, we're going to be looking at an MRI. Hopefully, this has given you a good foundation for that video. So until then, I'll see you all. Goodbye.